Good morning, everyone. Um, today is 3rd Nephi chapter 9, verses 1 through 11. So it's short. And what's happening is that um, the destruction is over, and it's still the three days of darkness, but a voice is heard. And it's the voice of the Lord what is, who confirms the judgments of God upon the wicked who were slain. And, and so in these, he's saying, um, a voice is heard saying, it's the, Jesus' voice, he's saying, the people of this city were destroyed because of their wickedness. The people of this city were destroyed because of their wickedness. And there was, uh, oh yeah, verse 2 in my reading last night, I really liked it. And it says, Woe, woe, woe unto this people. Woe unto the inhabitants of the whole earth, except they shall repent. For the devil laugheth, and his angels rejoice, because of the slain of the fair sons and daughters of my people. And it is because of their iniquity and abominations that they are fallen. And the imagery of this verse for me I was um, intriguing. And, uh... Sorry, um, where it says the devil laugheth, and his angels rejoice. Um, like they they laugh when when you die in sin, and they rejoice when you're fallen. It I don't know. It's he wins. You know when when I don't know what I'm trying to say, but. You know, like when you're when you succeed in righteousness, Heavenly Father and Jesus they celebrate with you and they reward you and they bless you. But when you fail in iniquity, the the devil laughs. He's like, ha ha ha, got another one. You know, he does eh. the imagery, anyways. Um, so in the supplemental, it talks about the voice and uh, the slain of the fair sons and daughters of the people. And it says, in the darkness of voices heard pronouncing a woe upon the people of the land and calling upon the inhabitants of the whole earth to repent. Those who are... Um, let's see, the Lord loves his people even when they are taken down through iniquity and abominations. That is the miracle of divine friend, fathership and a powerful lesson to us to extend our unconditional love to all within our circle of influence, even if they are suffering the consequences of transgression and sin. And who are those inhabitants of the whole earth whom the voice calls to repentance? Do they not include us as modern readers? Of these sacred chronicles, um, do the catastrophic consequences of sin reported in the Book of Mormon not move us to a renewed commitment to repent and bring our lives into conformity with the principles of eternity? When you read it, it does. When when you read the destruction and just, you're like, okay, time to step it up. Time to step it up. Uh, and then it says, it talks about how the Lord validates his word. Um, and it says, from Adam to this final dispensation, the Lord has warned his children to repent and live righteously else they be destroyed, i.e. physically swept off the earth. As well as losing the blessings of eternal life, the examples are stark proof of the fulfillment of sacred prophecies of the Lord himself or his prophets. Here are just a few. And in Genesis 7, he wipes out the wicked world with the flood of Noah. And then in Genesis 19:29, the cities of the plains. Then in Numbers Two, three, uh, the Canaanites. Then in Genesis thirteen, ten, Sodom and Gomorrah. 
then in 3rd Nephi 8, the cities on the American continent, then in Ether 15, and Mormon 6, and Mormon 9, it's the Jaredite and Nephite nations. And it says, History validates the words of God and his holy prophets. Let us be wise and learn from the past and liken the scriptures to our lives, both collectively and individually. So, when he says he's going to wipe people off the face of the earth, he does it. But, in this next section, um, now, we only read, well, I only read, verses 1 through 11. But this talks about, this includes uh, verse 12 as well. So, I'm just going to do it because it's one verse, and I'm going to read it tonight anyway. So, anyways. Um, it talks about because of their wickedness and casting out the prophets, there were none righteous among them because of their wickedness and their abominations. So it's talking about um, cities are spared because righteous people are found there. But when no righteous people are found, the cities are destroyed. And it says, it is instructive that the cities destroyed had no righteous left among the inhabitants, the righteous having been slain or expelled. This is a divine principle, that the wicked are sometimes spared because of the presence of the righteous among them. But if the righteous are no longer on scene, then the wicked are ripened for the administration of divine justice, including overwhelming destruction. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and then it gives a couple examples, but then it goes, perhaps the most famous instance of this principle is found in the account where Abraham pleads with the Lord to spare the city of Sodom. And he asks if there could, uh, peradventure ten righteous shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. But then, after the departure of Lot and his family, not even ten could be found, and the great city was annihilated when the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire out of heaven. I gotta blow my nose. Um. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um. Anyways. My thoughts on that are just, um that, you know, as long as we are righteous and as long as we pray for this nation and our city and our state, as long as we are righteous inhabitants of our living conditions, the state, the country, the city will not be destroyed as long as we are found righteous and worthy. And that's a little bit of comfort in this day and age. All right, that's all I got. I love you all. I gotta blow my nose. I'll talk to you later.